I wanted to take a few moments to talk to you about the experiments, the kinds of equipment I recommend, and how to set them up. So at the first part of all of the teacher's manuals, there's a section called Materials at a Glance. And in this section, I list all of the non-perishable items that you need for all of the experiments. If there is a perishable item that is required for an experiment, it will be at the beginning, at the front page of the experiment itself. So what I recommend is that before you start any of the experiments, I would gather all of these non-perishable items and put them someplace where you can find them easily. So when I was homeschooling and doing science experiments with my kids, what I did was purchase this nice bin that could roll and I could put it under a desk so that it could be stored away. And this bin has three different sections to it that lift off and inside each section I can put different items. So let's take a look at the different items in this bin. And we can just slide this over here to make some space for the other sections. So this is a medium sized section. It holds items that are a little bit larger than the smaller section will hold. And then this section here is the big section and it holds items that are taller than what the medium sized section can hold. So you can organize these bins any way you like. What I've done is in the smaller bin I've put some of the smaller items like the measuring spoons or a magnifying glass or the smaller microscope and some writing utensils. In the medium sized bin I have some of the larger items that I use for the experiments and I wanted to just mention here that for the experiments you can use recycled containers these are, this is a baby food jar and this is a large jar that had some butter in it and I've recycled some of these containers to use for the experiments. But if you want, you can also buy beakers and beakers are what are used in chemistry labs and a beaker is simply a container that has a little lip and it has some numbers on the side that will show you how much volume, specifically how much volume is in this container. So a beaker is good if you need to measure out exactly the volume that you're using for the experiment. But if you don't need to do that, and most of the experiments you don't for Real Science for Kids, you can just use a recycled container. And I also have in this bin my coffee filters and I have a smaller section here for another number of smaller items. And so for the larger section, you can put some of your larger items. And in this piece, I have some larger jars that I use for some of the experiments. I also bought these graduated cylinders. You don't have to use these. But if you want, again, to measure larger volumes in chemistry labs, students use graduated cylinders to measure volumes. So you can purchase those if you want to use graduated cylinders, but you don't have to. And I also in this bin have some of the materials that I need for the experiments. So this, for example, is the liquid laundry starch. And so, again, you can purchase equipment for the experiments or you can use recycled jars, baby food jars and such. But all of the materials that you need for all the experiments, you can probably fit into a bin like this or some other kind of bin and use them for the experiments. And so what I would recommend is that you simply put all of the materials that you need for all the experiments in a bin like this and put them all together so that you're ready for the experiments when you need to do them. And that way you can find the materials when you need the materials, you can have them stored, you can keep them in a safe place, and when you're ready to do the experiment, all the materials are there. And that's what I would recommend for the Real Science for Kids experiments.